What's going on people? It's Hajimoto and I am excited once again. We got an origin in front of us from Umarex. They've raised the bar again ladies and gentlemen. What they have done is I've called this package the no more excuses package. There is no more excuse why you don't own a PCP. So when you say well there's no way for me to put air in it. That's gone. Comes with a pump. Everything you need is in the box. Rebuild kits, O-rings, the whole pump, all the tools and wrenches to put it together, the fill probe that goes in it, magazine, all of it's in the box. There's no more excuses. All you've got to do is go out and get yourself an optic and get yourself some ammo and you're ready to go. Let me give you a little bit of a rundown on the, what this thing is, sizing wise and weight. The overall length of the rifle is 43.1 inches. The barrel length itself is 22.9 and the whole thing only weighs like 6.8 pounds in itself the whole weight without a scope just the of uh, the rifle itself the rifle has a composite stock and it's solid there is no hollow scratchiness to it it's got a nice dense feel it's a narrow stock so when you put your hand around that it feels really good in the hand and this also means it's going to be great for young shooters They'll be able to fit their hand around this and still reach the trigger. Some of the guns have such a pitch to that grip, they're so far away they can barely get their fingers to the trigger. Not going to have that problem with this guy. This is also has what's known as the Ever Pressure System. The Ever Pressure System in this bottom tube is built of two pieces. One is the part when you pump up here, it's going to fill and pressurize the main cylinder. At the forward end, there is a piston system that constantly keeps pressure on the remaining volume of that tank. So you, it forces that air to stay high. So through entire time until it's empty, it's giving constant ever pressure. It works really, really good. The trigger is awesome on this, and you get a lot of shots out of this, which I'm going to show you, 60 to 70 shots per fill, if you wanted to shoot it all the way down to nothing. But hang in there for a bit, because I'm gonna give you a little bit of data to look at, and I'm gonna show you up here. But I'm also, before I'm gonna to get to that, I wanna talk about the pump that comes with this. The pump that comes in the box, and you can see here from Umarex USA, JB's pumping this thing up. He takes it from zero all the way full, puts the thing together. I'll put a link of his video inside so you can take a look at exactly how many pumps it takes to get this thing filled. And I'll tell you right now, it's about 113 from nothing to full, 113 pumps. Now let's talk a little bit about the shot strings and the data that I'm gonna show you here. What I'm gonna show you is taking this gun, filling it to the 3,625 maximum, and then based on whatever I have for a hammer preload, shoot it to the point where it won't shoot anymore track every single shot. So now we know what that shot curve looks like. And now we can start flattening the curve out based on the projectile we're using. If we're gonna shoot a 15.89 grain pellet, JSB, we don't need as much power as we, if we're gonna shoot a 25 grain pellet, it's much heavier. So we can back that hammer off and get it in the sweet spot, gaining ourselves more usable shots. And that's kind of what I go through in this. So let's go ahead and go down the road of the shot string. I'll show you the data breakdown and I'll show you how you can take notes so you can figure it out for yourself. So on the origin, there's a hammer preload adjustment and it's located at the rear of the air rifle. You'll see this little cutout here. I put the Allen wrench in to show how it engages into that hammer preload. And as you turn it either clockwise or counterclockwise, clockwise is to increase the pressure or increase the tension and counterclockwise makes it softer. Therefore the hammer delivers less energy to the valve when it's softer 
and it delivers more energy to the valve when you turn it clockwise. So if you want more power, turn it to the right. If you want less power, turn it to the left. And these slides here are going to show, as I said before, when I took it out of the box, the stock setting was if you were to take that hammer preload, turn it all the way until it doesn't turn anymore clockwise, turn it back one full turn, that was how the gun came out of the box stock. And as you can see on this stock curve, the pressure curve, what happens is it goes along fine and then all of a sudden it hits a sharp drop and it drops off very quickly. When you back that hammer off 180 degrees, look at how that, that sharp drop is gone. The hammer preload still comes down over pressure from 3,625, and it still gradually comes down. That blue line, you'll see it, but look how much further it goes out in a straighter line and smoother. So, rightly so, if we go to 360 degrees, one full turn, look at how much straighter that drop is. Obviously, each hammer hit is delivering less energy, but you can see where the more preload you put on it, the sharper that drop off is going to happen because it's delivering so much energy to that valve, in turn dumping a lot more air. The Umarex Origin is a non-regulated gun. And that's not a bad thing, it's not a deal breaker. Not, you don't have to have a regulated gun to have a usable air gun. PCPs that were unregulated have been around forever and they work awesome. The only thing that you have to do is find where the string, the shot string, shots two, three, four, five, or how many they are, when they get close to each other and they only change by a couple of feet per second. That portion of the shot string is the sweet spot. And that's what we try to determine here. So when you buy your Umarex Origin and take it out of the box, the hammer preload, mine was, if you turn it, Put the Allen wrench into the hammer preload and turn it all the way clockwise till it won't turn anymore. Now back it out one full 360 degree turn. That's the way mine came out of the box. And so from this point forward when I'm talking about adjusting this, I'm going to be calling that stock. That is stock power. Then what I'll do is I'll back the hammer preload off 180 degrees. And then finally another 180 degrees, so we have a full 360 reduced. And you're going to see what that does to the shot string. I'll take 90 shots through each hammer preload variance. There will be three of them. It'll be stock, 180, and 360. When I start to go to the range and actually shoot, I will turn it all the way in clockwise for slug shooting. But let's go ahead and show you what these numbers look like. So on this first slide, you can see that the stock power setting shooting JSB 1589s went across for 70 shots. And you'll see that it starts off on the left-hand side, shot number one was somewhere around 860-ish. And as it goes through that power curve, you'll notice once it gets to around shot number 39, it starts to rise up. And the reason that rises up is because the tank pressure gets lower, but the hammer is still hitting harder. So the hammer will overdrive the valve, so you'll get maximum power production. But if you look along that curve at 900 feet per second, somewhere around 870 to 890, that's a pretty flat string there. And that's what we're trying to look at. So we'll isolate those areas based on the pressure curve. So here's the pressure curve from 3,625, and you can see it gradually dropping down, and it sharply drops at 62. And you can also see the speed is dropping in unison with it. Both of them are dropping off very quickly at about shot 62. So that means that when you start looking at the usable area of that curve, you're really between shot 7 and shot 66. In this particular fill, that's where you're at for a usable range. So on behalf of that, every 10 shots, if we were to mark what is the pressure at every 10 shots, we can now range where the pressure would be best to get to those flat spots. So now we drop the gauges in, and those gauges are actually the pressure that was in the valve at that spot. So at 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and 70. But we've already come to the conclusion that where we're dropping off is really outside the curve, so we won't count those. 
So we circle this area here is going to be our flattest spot for normal shooting. And this over here is going to be the high area. So if we wanted to shoot slugs or so forth, that's what we would target for that. Bracketing those areas by taking out the power pressure curve, so we don't need to see that so it doesn't complicate the screen. And now bracketing those areas, you'll see just between these shots here, we've got 30 normal shots that are pretty flat in that area. And on that, we will take it from 3,500 PSI down to 2,500. So remember, if you've got a stock origin and you fill it to 3,500, stop shooting it at 3,500, you will have 30 consistent shots, almost like a regulated gun. You can do the same thing down at the high end power. You get 15 consecutive shots if you do it at that end. And that's more power. If you notice, the line where the 30 shots are is somewhere around 900 feet per second. It's 950 feet per second at those 15. So you can see where you can use that to your better advantage if it's a heavier pellet. That means on the 15, your pressure range would be from 22 P, 2200 PSI to 1700 PSI. Remember guys, the pressure being less means the preload on the hammer drives the valve further. So you're generating more power. And But you notice you're getting a lot less shots in doing that. So this would be the stock setting. We're going to go through this for 180 degrees turned down, and we'll do the same thing for the 360. So let's pull up the 180 degree stuff. Okay, now if you take a look, we've backed that hammer preload off 180 degrees. So we completely went one half of a clock backing it off, making it lighter. So if you notice, though, look at the shot string. It has flattened out. It doesn't have that super drop off that it had before. If you notice the pressure drop next to it, we don't have that cliff. It's not falling at 62. It's gradually tapering down. So when we look at the usable shot string, it's a better area that we can actually get two groups out of like we did before. Every 10 shots did the same thing, trended the data across it. We'll take out those two areas. You've got that large area, then the small area. We'll pull the pressure, or pressure curve out of the way. Now we can clearly see when we bracket those areas, we've now got 33 shots in this area and it's pretty daggone flat. We've also increased the amount of shots for the high power side and we did that up to 20. So now overall we're getting more use of that shot string. Now if you look at the pressures, if you want 33 normal shots that are pretty close in power from 3725 down to 2750 will get you exactly what I'm showing you on this graph. And that would be backing that power from stock one half turn. And then look at your high power shots from 2595 PSI to 1900. Now this is all sounds really confusing guys, but let's say you just want those 20 shots. Only fill the gun to 2595 and then stop shooting it at 19. If you want those 33 shots, fill it to 3725 and stop shooting at 2750. It's just that easy. Things get really interesting when we turn it down 360 degrees, which you're going to see in a second. I'm not too sure it's usable, but I think if I were shooting 14 grain pellets, it would be a totally different conversation. When we did the 180 degree turn down, you may have noticed there was a substantial amount of air left in that curve at the end. And so what I said is, well, let me push it. Instead of 70, let me go to 80. And I did. I pushed it and we got another 10 shots out of it. But if you look, they fall off pretty quickly at the end where if you just kept it at 60 usable shots, you still got enough pressure in the tank. You're going to be around that 71 mark. That's going to be enough pressure where you can recoup and fill it back up again. So in this, turning it down one full turn, there's our usable area. There's our pressure indicators that were trended across that there's the area where we can actually use in both spots. And you'll notice the area now increased 46 shots in one area for the normal power and 16 high power shots in the other. But now look at those, look at those 46 shots. I didn't start them until they were around 830 to 835. They slowly creep up, and I mean ever so slowly. They creep up. 
and they just slowly top out at the high end at the last shot down there at uh, shot number 51. You'll look at that. Those things are coming out at 860 feet per second. Now, if that, if I change those projectiles from the 15.89s to like Crossman 14.3s, guaranteed that shot string of 40 shots, 46 shots, would be around 880 feet per second across 46 shots. So you would take it to 3,500 PSI, stop at 2,050, and you would get almost 50 shots. You could plank almost all day with that. And you can see that little group of the high power shots, only from, from 2,000 to 1,300. That's not bad. And that puts the high speed up around nine, 880, 900 feet per second. So you can see where you can monkey with the shot strings to try to get the best out of it. And obviously, if you look from 71 on, it's a cliff. It falls off really, really fast. And it's just not worth trying to pursue it. So this is what the shot curves look like using 15.89s and the three different variables I made. Now let's go ahead and show you what the accuracy looks like at the range. Okay guys, we filled her up to 3050 PSI. We're gonna be shooting the JSB exacts, the jumbos, the 15.89s, unsorted, unweighed. You're gonna hear the chrono at, at each shot. We're 50 yards uh, from the targets. They're gonna be two inch targets. I'm gonna put one mag on one two inch target, move over to the right, put 10 shots on the next one. Here we go. And also, this is the factory settings, and all I did was back the hammer off 180 degrees, as you've seen in the shot strings, just because I felt that that was a better position for these projectiles. Here we go. Just saying. <laughs> Moving over one target to the right. Now guys, this is stock. No tweaks, nothing done to it. All I did was clean the barrel and change the hammer spring on this. That is absolutely incredible. That's 50 yards, guys. And here you're going to see, I'm going to put a, a ruler next to each one of those groups. Absolutely insane for an entry-level rifle, unregulated. 
Okay guys, trigger weight. One pound, 5.2 ounces. One pound, 6.2 ounces. One pound, 13 ounces. Average, one pound, 9.2 ounces. Okay guys, that sound meter is exactly five feet forward of the muzzle and two feet off to the right. We're going to shoot downrange three times. I'm going to zoom in on the screen so you can see the sound meter react. Looks like 52. Fifty two. Fifty five. Okay, first slug up is going to be the FX hybrids. These are a two seventeen sizing, uh, twenty two grains. We're going to be shooting at a two inch target, fifty yards down range. The fill is three thousand fifty. The hammer spring is adjusted all the way in to max. Next up is going to be the Air Velocity Sport, 22 grain, 217 sizing, hollow point cup. Next up is the JSB knockouts. These are 2539 grains, sizing 217s. 800. Seven 
156. Seven hundred fifty six. Seven hundred fifty six. Seven hundred fifty two. Okay, in the slug run, next we've got the H&N 23 grain 217 sizing. Just wow. <laughs> okay, next up we got the Nielsen Specialty MO217 sizing, 23 grain. There's already a hole in the target. That was me. Complete mistake. We're not going to count that hole in the top right. So let's go ahead and get his set going. Five shots. Well guys, it's time for my final thoughts. The Umarex Origin legitimately produced some smiles and some nostalgic feelings of when I was a kid. I don't know what it is about this thing. This thing does everything right. Some of those responses that you saw when I was shooting were legitimate. That was honest, real feedback after shooting this thing. The way it feels in the shoulder, the consistency of the shots, the power delivery, it's not finicky with the pellets, it loves slugs, it feels great, it's quiet, everything's in the box, pump, o-rings, the whole rebuild kit, plus you get the rotary magazine. You can't beat this thing with a stick, you just can't. Dollar for dollar there is no better value on the market today, and I mean that. From the bottom of my heart, I'm being sincere, there is no better value. If you're sitting on the fence of having brake barrel pump guns and you want to make that step over into PCPs to see what it's all about, this is the vehicle for you. If you're thinking of getting someone their first PCP, perfect entry to do that. Everything they need to go out there and have some fun. There are a couple of little things that it doesn't do as well as I would personally like such as pellet probes. I hate 
uh, not pellet probes, but fill probes. I hate fill probes because it's something I can lose because I'm clumsy and I'll lose them. And when it, you have to have that piece that goes underneath the rubber flap, that kind of that's a little pet peeve of my own. It's nothing to do with the gun. It works fine and it fills it fine. The other thing is this very weak uh, 11 millimeter dovetail section up here in the upper rail. If you were to really tighten your scope rings, I'm positive you're going to shear those right off. So remember, just snug. This is a PCP. It has less kick than a 22 caliber. It's ridiculous. There's no recoil to this thing whatsoever. I can't say anything other than that. One of them is a personal pet peeve, and the other one is very, if you, as long as you stay within the reason of the strength of the plastic, it'll last forever. That's pretty much it, guys. I could go on and on and on, but I'm telling you, this thing is awesome. I'm going to stretch its legs out a little further over the next few months and see how much I can wring out of it for performance. But just the way it is, I love it. So that's pretty much going to do it on this one, guys. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them below. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. And until I see you on the next one, guys, shoot safe.